we'll just spotlight this so it'll be nice and clear for everybody. So grab your glass of water, your non-rolling chair, and let's go ahead and slide our socks and shoes off. Welcome to the Cognitive Empowerment Program's physical activity area. Um, we're so fortunate to have this beautiful space. And I'll encourage you to take your socks off as well. If you don't have any orthopedics that are absolutely necessary for standing, um, slide your socks and shoes off so we can really work on balance, which starts with the soles of the feet. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Slide your hips to the front of your chair so there's a little space behind you. And already you'll notice yourself have to sit up a little bit. Uh, and we'll be working on some of these balance postures, but we'll also be working on a lot of things that help with arthritis and chronic pain. So I offer the suggestion to take the things that work for you, take the offerings that make sense for you. And for the ones that don't, if I offer anything that brings you pain or discomfort, leave those behind. Uh, it's almost like a buffet. You don't have to take all of the offerings all together. You can really kind of pick and choose the ones that are okay for your body today. All right, so with your feet flat on the floor, let's just go ahead and curl our toes underneath a few times. Yeah. And some of your toes may cooperate, others may not. You could do this if you are wearing shoes. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just kind of check out how the soles of our feet are doing. You may already be getting some feedback, some sensation from the soles of your feet, especially if they're tight. But really simple stretches can change that. Let's go ahead and move to our hands. Stretch your hands out in front of you. Open up the spaces in between your fingers really nice and wide. And then curl your fingers in. Cover up your fingernails with your thumb and flick your fingers a few times, almost like you're flicking water onto somebody in a swimming pool or in a sink. Yeah. And then see if you can do that while you curl and open your toes at the same time. Yeah. A little dual tasking, a little cognitive challenge here to start out with for three, two, one, shake your hands out. And this is some of the movements that are really good for that a little bit of inflammation or joint pain that you may be experiencing. We're gonna start out by hitting up all the major joints, starting with our wrist. See if you can interlace your fingers, roll your wrist out. And with your fingers interlaced, point your palms forward and start to straighten your arms a little bit, yeah. You might feel a stretch through your back and your shoulders. You could stay here, especially if your arms are really tight or with an inhale, stretch your arms up and back. See if you can start to tune into your breath a little bit, which may be unnatural here. The tendency may be to want to hold your breath even. But if you bring breaths in and out, we'll help some of the blood circulate from our heart all the way up our arms to our fingertips as we get our heart kind of warmed up a little bit here, just simply by stretching our arms up overhead. And with an exhale, gently release. You might feel a little bit of tingling. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start to warm our lungs up as we get tuned in a little bit deeper to our breath. You know. Our breath is one of those things that we may not think about very often. It might stay very shallow. Many of us live at the very bottom of an exhale. But really simple big breaths can help to circulate oxygen around the cells in our body. It can help to sort of initiate some of that heal and repair work. And lung capacity can be great, especially if you're on a CPAP machine, especially if you're recovering from COVID. Uh, so we'll think about that with a little bit of intention as we start to warm up our lungs. Bring your arms alongside your body. Point your palms forward and straighten your arms. And separate your knees and your feet about hip width distance apart to come into this really nice neutral position. You might even stack your head a little bit more over your hips so that you start to get a little bit more upright and supported in your spine. Yeah. 
And it feels a little awkward to be here, a little against our natural tendencies. That's part of the practice. With an inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Big breath in. Exhale, pull your hands all the way back down through center. Yeah, let's do that a few times. You'll hear some of the class bells here at CEP. Inhale, arms up overhead. Slow exhale on the way down. And you might even start to feel yourself getting a little bit more energized from getting some of these big breaths in and out. Exhale to release. Let's do two more, just like that. Inhale, arms up overhead. Stretch out through your rib cage and your shoulders. Exhale, palms trace back through center. Last round. Inhale, reach up. Stretch up. And with your exhale, bring your palms all the way back down to the center of your chest. Yeah, let's take a chest press. Point your elbows out to the side. And this may challenge your wrist flexibility. See if you can work the palms of your hands and all 10 fingers together as much as possible. And when I say that, I mean as much as is comfortable for you today. Point your elbows out to the side and see if you can start to press your hands together a little bit. Yeah. You might feel this across the front of your chest. We'll work on a lot of things that will help rebalance posture especially the effects of gravity and time that they have on our posture. With an inhale, lift your chest up towards your thumbs a little bit. Stay for your exhale. And gently release, shake your hands out. Sometimes I say, you know, our breath is the longest relationship that we'll ever be in. So you can come up on to tippiest of toes one at a time. So it's nice to kind of cultivate and nurture that a little bit. And we'll jump down to our legs and nurture a little bit of movement and a little bit of suppleness in some of these joints that can really be problematic, places like our knees and our hips. So we'll proceed with caution because that's the way we show our body that it's time to repair and time to heal, right? Those small choices to stay comfortable. The next time you come up onto your left tippiest of toe, see if you can stay here. Uh huh. Bring your hands to your hips and adjust your posture by toning your low belly and finding that good picture day posture, one that's nice and supported. Mm -hmm. You may already feel this in your left calf and your left leg. You can stay here or use the strength of your belly to lift your leg up, maybe just a few inches to hover your foot away from the floor. Feel free to use your left hand for a little bit of support on your knee or behind the back of your thigh, but keep that nice, tall, attentive posture for three, two, and release. Come all the way back down. Give yourself a little massage on that left thigh. Yeah. You might even bring your hand into a little fist and do a little lymphatic massage by using the strength of your hand to press out some of this lymph fluid a little bit. Uh-huh. And come all the way back to center, reset, hands to hips, lift your chest up and just stack your posture a little bit more upright. We'll work on that over the next few rounds of these nice low body strengtheners. Come up onto your right to be a to toe. Stay here. Or if it feels like an option that's comfortable on this side, you might float your right foot to hover a few inches or no inches away from the floor, depending on what feels best for you. And you can pull your knee into your chest a little or a lot, not so much that you feel pain, but enough so that you feel the engagement on the top of that thigh and then gently release. Yeah. I'll turn to the side here. Stretch your left leg out in front of you. Flex your foot. Flare your toes and see if you can start to point and flex here a few times. Feel free to slide a little cushion under your heel if there's not enough padding there, that it's a little discomfort. And the next time you flex your foot, try to open up the spaces in between your toes. That may not happen for a while and that's okay, but we'll try anyway. It's one of those things that helps us catch ourselves when we fall is having this ankle mobility, foot stability, 
Inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Take a big reach up through your spine. And on your exhale, see if you can walk your hands down your left leg a little or a lot, depending on what intensity of back stretch feels doable for your back today. If you like the back stretch, you can drop your chin down to your chest and that'll help intensify it just a little bit. And if that's not something that feels good for you, feel free to walk your hands out of it. Lift your torso a little bit higher to take some of the pressure out of any joints or any places that may feel like it's a little too much. If you'd like more of the leg stretch, flex your foot a little bit more. Flare your toes open. Yeah, just like that. And notice if you're still holding your breath. Yeah, one round of breath in and out here. On your next breath in, walk your torso all the way back up. Bring yourself up to a seat to switch. Slide your left foot in to meet your right. Stretch your right leg out in front of you. Flex and point your foot a few times just to get some range of motion going here. And there's never anything that we notice and give ourselves a hard time about in this practice, right? Especially if we might notice things are a little cranky or cricking or cracking. We'll just kind of be gentle with what we notice. The next time you flex your foot, spread your toes open. Inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Take one of those big arm circles up that we started with. Exhale, walk your hands down your leg. And you might notice the hamstring stretch on the back line of your right leg. You might also notice the big back stretch here. Notice where it is that you feel the most sensation. Where does this stretch seem to really kind of register in your body? And then notice if there's a place that you can kind of soften unnecessary tension, maybe in the sole of your left foot. You might relax your left leg a little bit more if it's pressing down really hard. Yeah. Inhale, walk yourself all the way back up to your seat. Come all the way back up and bring your feet flat to the floor. And let's go ahead and tap our feet out a few times. Yeah. And you can just go at whatever pace, whatever rate is going to work for you here. We're kind of waking up the legs a little bit and also getting some of that lymphatic drainage we were talking about before. Oh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and give ourselves a little lymphatic massage on the top of that right thigh. Yeah, working some of the old blood and fluid out of the tissues and letting some fresh hydration come in. Yeah. And you might even come down and stimulate your calves a little bit with the strength of your fists. Take your knuckles just a little bit towards your calves here. Feel free to walk your feet a little bit wider to make space for yourself. And come all the way back up. And you may wonder, you know, waking our legs up like that, what's, what are some of the purposes of that? You might imagine we've got this heart pumping blood all around our body. Sometimes we say in yoga, our legs are like the heart of the lower half of our body. It's the thing that pumps blood all the way back up. A lot of folks might have experienced blood clots in their legs and things like that. So we want these blood vessels and veins and all the kind of ar artillery things that support the health of our heart to be active in our legs, just as much as in our upper body. All right. So we've got our ankles warmed up. We've got the back of our legs warmed up, but let's go ahead and get into our hips. Separate your feet about hip width distance apart again. Same thing with your feet as you windshield wiper side to side a few times. And you may feel this movement in your hips as the bones of your thighs kind of rotate in the sockets of your pelvis. You might also feel it in your knees a little bit as we say, sway side to side, some of those tendons and ligaments get stretched out there. Come all the way back to center. Take a big breath in and reach up, stretch up through your spine. 
exhale, pull your hands to trace all the way back through center. And this time, bring your hands down to the tops of your knees. Yeah. Straighten your arms a little bit to lift your chest up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do some exercises that will be really nice if you have any back pain. Our back can get those discs that are compressed and kind of pinch over time. And we'll do a little something to kind of give them some space. With your hands on your knees, round your back, drop your chin down towards your chest a little bit. Yeah. Let's take one or two breaths here with a rounded back. You might get a little stretch through your low back, middle back, and upper back as you drop your chin down and round through your shoulders. And the next time you lift your chest and take an inhale, try to arch your back and do the opposite of that shape by bringing your hands nice and open in front of your chest. Open up the spaces in between your fingers and then hug your elbows back a little bit. Notice the broadness from collarbone to collarbone across your chest. This is really fighting the effects of gravity, but it's also taken some pressure off of herniated disc in our back. Exhale, hands to knees, round your back. Drop your chin down towards your chest. And then on your inhale, arch your back, bring your fingers back towards your chest, hug your elbows towards one another. Exhale, round your back, chin to chest. Inhale, arch your back, pull your shoulder blades closer together. Yeah, let's do a few rounds as you start to move with your breath a little bit. Inhale, lift your chest and your chin. Exhale, round your back, stretch your shoulders. Two more. Inhale, big breath in. Broaden across the front of your chest. Exhale, lower your head down, round through your shoulders. Very good. Come all the way back to center. Stick your hands out a little bit. Whew. I feel a little better already in my spine. And you know, a lot of times the point of these stretches is not to go to our maximum version of this stretch that's available to us. Many times we want to do an exaggerated version of the stretch, but that may not be the most sustainable thing for our spine. That medium level of intensity is what we're going through here. Just enough to feel the stretch not so much to feel the strain. Yeah. All right. So speaking of back pain, one more of our favorite stretches at CEP for back, back pain and, and chronic pain in our low back or our lumbar spine is a little bit of twisting. And I'll offer you the same advice. Only twist as far as you need to to feel the stretch. Bring your hands to your hips. Find your good supported posture by tone in your belly and stacking your spine a little bit more upright, a little bit more attentive, yeah. A little bit more than your normal posture, perhaps. With an inhale, stretch your left arm up overhead, straighten your arm to your capacity. Bring your fingertips together. Take a big breath in and reach up. Exhale, lean to the side. Inhale back to center. Exhale, stretch your side. One more time. Inhale, reach up. On your exhale, notice the stretch in the left side of your rib cage. Inhale, come all the way back to center. And this time, cross your left hand outside your right knee. All the way across your body or just as far as you can reach is perfect wherever you're at. Take a big breath in, lift your chest up and start to use the strength of your back and your belly to turn your chest open to the right. You might even turn and look past your right shoulder like you're looking for a car behind you. Mm -hmm. And in these twists, it definitely is a little more effort to breathe deeply. You might have to challenge yourself to take one or two slower, smoother breaths in here. Let all that oxygen circulate into those sore muscles in your back. Yes. 
And on your exhale, come all the way back to center. Unwind from your twist. You might even reach back and kind of check things out a little bit. There might be some differences on the left and the right side after only one version of that on the side that we started with. Let's even things out. Let's get things the same on both sides. With an inhale, stretch your right arm up overhead. Reach up through your fingertips. And this time, bring your left hand to your left hip. Find your supported posture by toning the muscles of your low belly and pulling them in towards your spine a little bit. Take a big breath in. Exhale, stretch to the side. Inhale, back to center. Notice the strength that your legs and your belly uses to bring you back to center time and time again. On your next inhale, come all the way back up. Reach up, stretch up. Exhale, bring your right hand outside your left knee this time or whatever you can reach here. Lift your chest and as you take a big breath in, this time turn and gaze past your left shoulder behind you. That brings the twist all the way up into the back of your neck. And you can notice already if you've gone a little too far, if you need to dial it back a little bit to make it more comfortable for yourself. The offer stands to be comfortable at all times, especially in your back as we do these big, Next round of one or two deep breaths. One more breath in and out. Very good. Yeah, just like that. Come all the way back to center. Unwind. And let's go ahead and come into a seated march here. Yeah. You can use your hands for a little bit of assistance. You could even bring your hands behind the backs of your legs and help pull your legs up a little bit higher. Or you could challenge the strength of your legs and bring your hands to your hips. Yeah, nice and slow paced here. Now, what's the first thing that wants to happen? Your chest wants to drop down. That's what time and gravity do to us, right? See if you can counteract that by lifting your chest up, using the strength of your belly that helps so much with balance. And this lower body strength and coordination also is one of the things that can help us catch ourselves when we fall. Yeah. Good. Very good. Now, listen carefully. The next time you lift your right leg up, hold. And stretch your left hand out in front of you. So we've got opposite arm opposite leg here, making sure the left and right sides of our brains are communicating across the hemisphere there. See if you can hold for three, two, release. Come all the way back down, hands to hips. And you didn't think we were just gonna do that on one side, did you? We gotta do the same thing, second side. Come up on to your left to be as to toe this time. Stay here or return here anytime, or you can pull your knee into your chest. Again, feel free to use your hand for a little assistance on the left side. Everybody stretch your right hand out in front of you. And I always say palm facing up because we want a little bit of gas money, like you're going to accept some cash. Yeah. Big bills only, please. <laughs> Press your hips down to lift your chest up. Flex your foot, flare your toes for three, two, one, come all the way back down. Yes, massage your legs out with both hands this time. A lot of work required to get through that. And you don't have to do the whole thing, right? You can take breaks when you need to. You can pause and find the variation that works for your body. The invitation is always open to make it your own. All right, so we got these lower legs turned on for sure. I feel my legs kind of warming up a little bit. I feel that they've done a little bit of work. Let's go ahead and get into some of the health of our shoulders and our rotator cuffs. We've got this huge network of really um, complex muscles and tendons working together in this shoulder girdle. And if anything that you feel along the way doesn't feel 
great for you. If there's a little sharp pain, feel free to kind of dial it down a little bit more uh, to a more doable level for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. See if you can bring your arms out to a T, palms facing forward. And this is a big shape, take up a lot of space. And then bend your elbows 90 degrees like a cactus or a field goal post. Yes, palms facing forward. Take a big breath in. And on your exhale, start to bring your palms towards one another. And they may not touch all the way, that's okay. Inhale, open all the way back up. Elbows out to the side and exhale, palms and elbows towards one another. Let's do one more here. Yes, try to keep the lift of your chest, the strength of your belly, right? That's the challenge. My natural habit doesn't want to do that. Point your elbows out to the side. Take a big breath in. And this time, see if you can bring your forearms parallel to the floor. And then all the way back up. Yeah, two more just like that as you butterfly open across the front of your chest. We're just doing a little flossing in this shoulder girdle, making sure that everything's working okay. Yeah, next time you come all the way out to here, we'll take a little break. <laughs> You're like, no, wait, what's next? All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back to it. Roll your shoulders up, back, and down. Let's break up some of the tightness and some of the tissue that kind of builds up overnight in our shoulders. Up, back, and down a few times. Let your shoulders come into a little bit more exaggerated shape here. You might imagine your shoulder blades gliding down your back as you start to break up a little bit of that behind you. You might say there's some cricking and some cracking. Yeah, and then roll your shoulders forward a few times in the opposite direction, just to make sure things are nice and balanced both ways. This is definitely the less coordinated effort with our shoulders rolling forward because we don't do it as often. So it may feel slightly awkward here, but that's okay. Those awkward efforts we know are always really good for cognitive connections. The ones that we don't do often are the ones that pay off the most. See if you can bring your elbows out to the side, come back to your cactus arms or your field goal post. Find that nice supported posture that we've been sort of dialing into over our practice together. And we're almost at the end, so bear with us on these last few rounds. On your next inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Exhale, elbows out to the side. Inhale, arms up and a little more doable. You can bring your hands wider, a little more difficult. You can hug your elbows and your biceps in towards your ears. You choose. Continue to move with your breath for five, four. Notice those shoulders now, don't we? Three two and one come all the way back down oh our shoulders definitely felt that one all right let's get our neck we've gotten our shoulders warmed up we've done our hands our palms our knees our ankles our hips we've activated our belly all sitting down but one of the things that definitely bothers most of us the most is our neck right so let's go ahead and top this off with a few neck stretches here, especially if you notice that your neck is really tight. Only go as far as you need to to feel a stretch. And that's still really beneficial, especially with deep breaths over, a, you know, 30 seconds to a minute's length. So that's what we'll do here together. Come to your supported stacked posture the one that feels awkward and uncomfortable because we don't do it all the time. The tendency is to sit like what? Like this. <laughs> so you might draw your shoulders back and down. Lift your chin up just slightly so your chin is parallel to the floor. And then drop your left ear down towards your left shoulder. Yeah. 
you may notice a stretch on the right side of your neck. This may already be intense, and then this may already be more than enough of a stretch for you. Or you might bring your left fingertips towards the part of your head that's closest to the ceiling. And just add a little, very gentle amount of weight as you stretch your left elbow out to the left. And then you can lift your chin up or down just slightly. As you notice the stretch on the right side. And this is a very gentle movement, but it might feel like an intense sensation. Especially if you notice things are tense, continue to breathe deeply here. The next time you find somewhere that feels a little bit tender, see if you can stay there for just one more big breath in. And then exhale, release your hand, come all the way to bring your neck back to center. And just notice if you feel a difference in the left and right side after that. I feel like I could even feel that a little bit in my back when I did it. You might notice it in other places you might not expect. All right, same thing, second side. Drop your right ear down to your right shoulder. Bring your fingertips on your right hand up to the crown of your head. If you'd like to add just a little gentle pressure there, stretch your right elbow out to the side. Slow down and steady your breath. And then optionally lift and lower your chin very slowly. And notice if that changes your experience of this stretch. And gently release. Come all the way back to center. Roll your shoulders out a few times. If there's anything left over, we'll go ahead and clear it out here. Fantastic. Stretch your right leg out in front of you. And then bring your left ankle beside that. You might have to slide your hips to the front of your chair. Flex your feet a little bit. Flare your toes, which is already a balanced struggle to be here. Try to press your heels down and just lift your chest up a little bit. Uh-huh. And you could stay like this with your legs side by side, or if it's comfortable, cross your left ankle on top. With an inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Reach up through your fingertips. And on your exhale, walk your hands down your leg a little or a lot. Only as far as you need to to feel the stretch in your back or in your legs. Or wherever it is that you feel the stretch. Soften your face, especially here with your face hanging. You can kind of let your jaw hang loose. You might let go of some of the expressions that we hold on our face all day long. And we'll go into a hip stretch. You can always come back to this leg crossed fold forward we're in. Or you might grab onto your top ankle and pull it above your bottom knee, almost like a figure four stretch. You can stay here with your bottom leg straight. Or you can bend your right knee and place the sole of your right foot to the floor. And you'll see this little figure four in your top leg here. Again, if this is already too intense, feel free to go back to ankles crossed, hands on top of your thighs and that fold forward. Or if you're okay here, especially women, you've got a little bit more open hips just naturally. If you'd like a little bit more intensity, you can bring your left hand to the top of your left knee and just very gently press down. Try not to lose your posture. Let's maybe even take one or two slow breaths in and out here. 
try to relax and release that outer left hip a little bit just by letting go of any muscles that may be toning there. Yeah. One more round of breath in and out. And this is a great stretch if you've been having some sciatic pain in your glutes or in your back. This is one that really kind of opens up that piriformis glute muscle. Stretch your ankles back down to the floor. And then bring your heels side by side again. Press your hips and your heels down into the floor to lift up out of your low back and keep your good posture. And then cross your right ankle on top this time. With an inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Take an arm circle, reach up. Exhale, walk your hands down your leg. Release your chin down towards your chest. And if it's okay for your body, for your breath, you might even close your lips and just allow your breath to come in and out of your nose. Breathing in and out of our nose is one of the most generous ways to circulate oxygen around our body. It's one of the most efficient ways to breathe. But if it's not okay for your body today, feel free to just breathe however makes you more comfortable. Stay here or grab onto your right ankle. Pull your ankle up above your bottom knee. Optionally, bend your left knee. Place the sole of your left foot on the floor. Bring your left hand to the sole of your foot and your right hand to your bent knee. Flex your top foot. Keep your foot activated here to protect your knee a little bit. And then feel free to press that knee down towards the ground below or not, right? Especially if your body's giving you a little bit of feedback here, and it may. And that's okay. There's never a reason to be hard on ourselves in this practice. There's never a reason to be hard on our bodies by coming into negative self-talk. If you notice any of those tendencies arising, you might offer a kinder thought for yourself to consider. You might replace a negative thought with a positive one, perhaps. It's funny how our body holds on to the negative so much more easily than the positive. Sometimes we have to really reinforce and remind ourselves very gently release. Bring your feet back flat to the floor. Yeah. Let's rock side to side just a few times just to kind of notice if anything has shifted from where we started in our practice. You might notice the muscles of your belly that have to engage to bring you back to center as you tick-tock side to side. And the next time you come all the way to the left side, see if you can stay here and hold. Take a big breath in, come all the way back up and switch. See if you can sway over to the right side. Keep breathing here. And all the way back to center. Take a big breath in. Exhale, lean forward, slide your hips a little bit further forward in your chair. And then tick-tock back a few times. Yeah. Let's just do these last few moment movements here to finish stretching out our back, the same place that we've been working with to get rid of some of the discomfort that just comes from, you know, being at home and being in our everyday lives. We've done a lot of movements that we don't necessarily do day to day. A lot of gestures with our body that aren't necessarily always happening when we're taking care of ourselves and our homes. And that's what we do to help with chronic pain, to help keep balance. And some of us might be surprised by some of the mood benefits that doing some of these shapes can bring on, helping getting some of the tension out here so it doesn't pop up in other places in our lives, right? Come all the way back to center. Take a big breath in and reach up through your fingertips. Stretch up through your spine. Exhale, pull your hands all the way back through center. Interlace your fingers to the webbing and rest your knuckles in your lap. 
You know, here at the Cognitive Empowerment Program, one of the core values of our yoga program is acceptance. How do I accept the things I cannot change? The things that were dealt to me that I don't like to deal with. And one of the things that we say is that being upset about the things we cannot change or control is a waste of the resource of our energy, right? Some of us are so upset that we pour all this energy and resource into things that we cannot change. So we'll take a moment here to just sit with the things that we value, that are valuable to us, with a little bit of acceptance, a little bit of compassion for the things that have been hard to deal with. And we'll do that by working with one of the favorite um, affirmations that we work with here with our CEP yogis. And it is, peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. But we really, making peace with ourselves is a good place to start. Stopping being so at war with ourselves is a good place to start. And coming into the moment is one of those places where that is available, a place where we're not fixated on planning and predicting the future, a place where we're not nostalgic about the way things were in the past, but a place where we really appreciate what's happening here now. So we'll do that with our affirmation, whether it rings true for you today or not. It's a uh, intention. It's an invitation, something that doesn't have to be true to be effective. All right. So interlace your fingers to the webbing and we'll just say this a few times out loud. Then I'll ask you to say it a few times whispering. And then I'll ask you to say it a few times silently to yourself and your own inner dialogue. All right, so let's take a moment to get set up. See if you can readjust your posture back into that neutral position. Feet and knees hip width distance apart. Relax your knuckles into your lap so you can release any effort in your shoulders. And try to just stack your head right over your hips. And you can either turn your gaze down to look at the floor in front of you. Or if it feels comfortable and it's okay for your balance, you might close your eyes and turn your attention back inside, back into this inner landscape of what's happening inside our own experience, our own skin. See if you can start that process out by just noticing your experience of your breath. You might feel like when you inhale, there's a certain place in your body that you feel rise or expand. You might notice when you exhale, you might have a little drop in your shoulders or your chest. And you may notice if your breath is smooth or a little bit more choppy this afternoon. What's the texture of your breath? And you know, our breath is really this thing that drops us into being here right now. It's hard to breathe into the future or the past. Our breath is happening right here. And so staying with that nice, steady, constant of your breath, we'll start with our affirmation out loud a few times. And if you don't feel comfortable saying it out loud, you might just whisper it to yourself. Feel free to make it your own. I'll go ahead and start. Feel free to jump in. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins 
with me. Now whispering, peace begins with me. 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 And now silently to yourself and in your inner dialogue, see if you can say that five times. I'll keep track of our count. One more round silently to yourself. On your next inhale, stretch your arms up overhead, reach up with your fingertips. And you might imagine all 50 of us reaching up at the same time, pulling some energy and support down from this group that you're practicing with today. On your exhale, pull your hands down to the center of your chest again. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, scoop your arms up overhead, grab a little energy from the group. Exhale, hands to center. Last one. Inhale, arms up overhead. Reach up through your fingertips. Take a fresh breath in. Exhale out of your mouth. <sighs> like you could let go of anything that doesn't serve you. And take a moment here, just in your stillness, to acknowledge the first thing that comes to mind when you consider what is it that you're grateful for right here, right in this moment today. And then start to rub your palms together to create a little heat from the friction of your hands. Almost like we could sprinkle a little bit of that gratitude into the rest of our day, into the rest of the room that we're in. A little faster yet with your hands and then close your eyes, cup your palms over your eyelids and blink a few times. Maybe sense the heat from your hands on your eyelids. And gently release. So these simple stretches can be something that can really unfold into a lot of benefits physically. Things like balance, cardiovascular health. It can really help us emotionally, <laughs> things like helping with our sleep and helping to regulate emotions, helping to regulate our nervous system. And it can also help with thinking and processing, um, help with our kind of mental processing and processing speed as well. So something to consider if you've been open to trying yoga before. There's a lot of resources here at CEP with the Alzheimer's Association through all kinds of programs here at Emory. And um, so we'll record this session and post it on YouTube if you'd like to practice again sometime. And um, Suzette, any questions come in from any of our folks or anything? Yeah, we did. We had an interesting question. Um, is it okay to lie down after this? Absolutely. Yeah, especially if you're sort of feeling called to lie down, if your nervous system is kind of telling you that you're ready for a little bit of rest, you're probably ready for a little bit of rest. Um, and this can also be something you can imagine doing this before bedtime as part of a nighttime routine. Taking those big, deep cleansing breaths in can really help our body sort of prepare to get into that state of rest and digest where we start to get a little sleepy and give ourselves time to repair. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Um, so absolutely, if you're feeling a little called to go have a rest after this, go for it. Also really great for pre-bedtime rituals. Great, Megan, thank you. And we have one other question. Uh, someone uh, hurt the top of their foot during um, walking or jogging a little bit and has a, a bit of swelling at the top of the foot, are there any exercises that might help with the swelling on the top of the foot? You know, with swelling, 
I say some things, some of the best things you can do are just a little bit of cold therapy or hot therapy on your foot, whether it's a little ice pack or some frozen peas or even the, the sort of heated pad. Um, those stretches can definitely help a little bit. Um, but especially with our feet, one of the main things we're dealing with is just time to be able to repair things. Um, so definitely light stretches, just like the ones that we did today, I think will be totally fine for any kind of swelling that you have up top. But, you know, swelling only takes about, you know, three or four days to kind of heal up, clear up. So if it's something that persists after that, we always recommend checking in with your general care provider, just if it's something that doesn't clear up on its own very naturally. I think that's all the questions we had, Megan. And uh, thank you so much. That was so relaxing for me just to listen to your voice. It was wonderful. Um, I did post the link to our YouTube channel in the chat. Uh, so if you're interested in going back and looking at this or any of the other wonderful videos that we've collected over the uh, two plus years of doing CEP Community Live, please check that out. Uh, Megan has some wonderful uh, yoga practice sessions um, on that channel, as well as a lot of other um, uh, the service providers from our program. So uh, yeah, please check it out. Thank you so much for facilitating, Susa. Thank you all so much for joining. We'll have this video posted later on this afternoon, and we'll see you guys next week for CEP Live. I think we've got I, Tony with the Get Active next week. So we should be checking in with you guys then. And thank you all so much. Thanks, Suzette. Thanks, everyone.